Finally, <clears throat> we can work on something other than the render. <sighs> oh man, I've been waiting for this. That render, uh, making a render takes time, and I'm ready to move on from it for a bit. We're gonna be focusing on the sound system, and I guess the first things I'm gonna do is just get some basic stuff going here. Um, now we need header guard for fast sound. Bell. And let's see if you're hidden. Now, I always put a hidden um, header file in there to basically define stuff that. Uh, basically define things that I need for the sound system uh, for any like of one of these uh, modules and that section always changes where the goal oh, sorry the goal for this one it should not change at all no. I must be joking let me make sure something I am kind of derpy. And this one should just be found. Hidden. And I'm going to include. As you can see, there's a hidden one for the render. Oh, that's correct. All right. <clears throat> and in sys, I just need to add the sound. It's going to be here. And there we go. Time for the sound API. Uh, we're going to be using SEO Mixer for now. Um, I'm not entirely sure if I might keep using it because I might switch to OpenAL, but um, that's going to have to be, it depends how well uh, the mixer works because the SEO mixer is kind of limited on what it can do. So yeah, also I've been working on um, basically some test sound effects, uh, here's a, the song that's going to be used for the music. Open. Oh, sport. Now, I'm not a very good uh, <laughs> music producer at all, but this should hopefully prevent copyright. So I'll just play it real fast just to show you what it sounds like. I decided to try my hand at jungle ambient <laughs> sound effects real quick. Yeah. I guess SFX. Alright. Um, I'll need I need to make some uh, quick uh, sound effects real fast. I'll come back and show them off. I'm gonna use a little program called it's tools. Let's see where are you? Oops. Aha, here it is. This little dude. If it runs. Aha. 
That just allows you to make quick sound effects. Yeah, I'll just make a few of them just for testing purposes. Alright, I'll be right back. Alright, got the uh, sound effects made very fast. It only took like a few minutes. Um, we have a explosion. Yeah, these should be useful. Alright, time for some coding real fast. Yay. I've just noticed something. I forgot to add in scones. Um, so, I'm going to show you how this is done real fast. SC conscript. Just to demonstrate how this build system works. So, I forgot to add that in. So, Sound. Now, hashtag indicates that it's at the root directory of this project, and so sound. Well, the cool thing about this is that this means that you can have multiple directories per stuff so you don't have so it won't pollute like the main directory as you can see the main directory has the main entry point for the application on previous projects uh, that I've done they I've used Visual Studios and it's kind of hard to put that app to make it work with multi multi directories but because I switched to um, Codium um, and using this, using uh, scones as a build system, it's made, it's a lot easier to do it this way, and I'm loving it. So, um, I'm not gonna sample real fast because I'm gonna be copying some code. Excuse me. Just copy and paste what these and. The only thing I've been piling in here so far is going to be the sound. So, this will be for sound. Yeah, I don't know why I haven't showed this off, this portion of the project off. Um, it's just stuff you need to do when you're working on a bigger project. Um, if you have like a multi-directory structure you're playing with, it's better to use some sort of um, build system for it. There's a bunch out there. There's C make, which is another one. I just don't care for the syntax of that one. I have my own build system, but that one's more similar to um <coughs> to Visual Studio how it operates, so it's kind of useless on this project. So yeah, that essentially does it. So we'll just compile. Let's make sure we're fast. <sighs> Come on, bro, compile. Yeah, this, this is going to be a reasonably big project. Let's see, did it compile the sound? Oh, yeah, it did not compile the sound. Now it should work. There it goes. Compiled it. Shouldn't really have anything in there. Good lord, there's so many source files now. Alright, let's get back. Uh, let me get back to work on this, and hopefully I'll have an example of this thing running. Alright, I did a bit of work on the um, sound API, and I got music working, so I'll demonstrate it real quick. Yep, it works now. 
Um, it's pretty simple. Um, basically, you just load up a music uh, file from, from your file system, which uh, I'm just simply calling it Jungle. Um, it's loading the Jungle MP3 file from the music directory in the data slash sound directory. And then I simply play it when the, uh, after I load it. Um, I need to add in a, another function called halt later on. <coughs> and yeah, that works. So, we can now play music. Alright, um, I did some more work on it. And I think I figured out the math between, let me show you, this function which is syntax set position. As you can see, it passes an angle and a distance. Um, if you look down here, an angle is from 0 to 360, which is degrees. And the location in this relation to the listener, angle will reduce as necessary. Angle 0 is due north, so it's basically this way. So we had to do, I had to do a bit of um, playing around with ATM2, which I'm going to demonstrate in a sec. And for distance, it's basically a pretty simple calculation. If you look at the source code, um, if you take the position minus the sound position, to get the distance is basically the length of the vector produced by that using the absolute value function. And I simply just clamp it between 0 to 255. Uh, what does this do? Actually, I don't need that one. Because we're not doing the dot product. Um, simply, I'm taking the, no I'm normalizing it so we'll be in the middle. So we can be in unit coordinates. And to get the angle, I had to switch uh, this y value, which is typically the first value in the ATM2 method, to the x. But I negated it because in documentation here it says that it's clockwise. So if you go clockwise, it should increase the value positively, like a clock. And the y value is in the x position. I also added 180 to it to basically make sure I had the correct offset. So if we were to run this right now, and run, you will see that, you know, just over here in the uh, command prompt in um, Codium. I'm at angle 305 and the distance 255 and we're going to get closer to the center. The angle changes and I'm getting closer to the source. So we're going to go to near zero, zero is north. If I go this way it starts giving me the correct angles because I'm going clockwise. And the distance, I might change it to where it's from like 0 to 1 to uh, like 1024. Just I have to do a bit of calculation on, on because I'm thinking about using the when I get to tile mapping, it's going to be a 128 by 128 tile map. And I'm going to have to do some math to figure out how big the distance is because. Um, because it's going to be significantly bigger than at this 250, uh, 0 to 255, so that calculator, a 128 times 32 would be 4096, so, and the screen which is 2, 
width-wise would be 20 tiles. If you times that by 32, that'd be 640. And that will be 480, unless we're doing a white screen format. So, I'm thinking about 1024 would be 255. Do more math to figure this out. So I'll come back with the math once I'm done with this. Oh my god, the calculator is very stupidly simple. Um, basically, when you do the distance function, it's you clamp it from 0 to 1024 or just any value that you want to clamp it. Then you divide it by the max value, which here it's uh, 1024, and you mix it between 0 to 255, which is the distance for this function, which fits distance right here. And you can do this for any arbitrary distance that you want. So it works quite well. Let's run it. And as you can see, the distance is 355, but the actual distance is 88. And if I were to go this way, just watch it increase. As soon as it hits 1024, it stops at 255 with the actual distance. So, yeah. It's arbitrary and it works, and I like it. It's one of the simplest calculations ever. My carriage it back. Oh, exactly zero. Heck yeah. All right. back again and it's the other next day um, I've decided to make some changes to it instead of going down this route I decided to implement some classic structures like uh, for handling music sound effects and uh, 2d sound effects um, basically <clears throat> these systems control the music and the the sound chunks and that sort of stuff. Um, give these uh, classes, or I guess structures technically, a name, and it will do things with it. Um, what you load up is just a music stream or a sound effects stream, and this right here will be useful for later when I need a list of <coughs> names for the music and the sound effects. Uh, one, I also added some volume stuff so far. And I have to say one thing. If you go in here, I really do like the range between 0 and 1. It makes it easy to, mul to do multiplication. I'm going to demonstrate to you that in a minute. Oh. Yeah, right now we're having a thunderstorm outside, so it's going to be kind of loud. Alright, let me run this real fast. And as you can see, there's a, a volume control. And if you turn it down, the master volume, it turns it down globally. But at the same time you turn down the music control, it goes down two, to like three, uh, point three. You can turn this back up, it goes back louder. This one is for sound effects, but I don't have it implemented yet. And as you can see, I moved the, um, the directional test to this uh, menu. So this should help me with testing. So yeah. 
I'll be right back, hopefully tonight, with another update. Whew, I did a bunch of work. Um, I basically made it where it'll play multiple songs, and it acts like an any media player, which is pretty freaking sweet. I'm really enjoying this. <laughs> I didn't think I would have so much fun with sound. I mean, dude, it's crazy. Let me show you real fast where I'm at. And I might make a quick preview video on YouTube tonight, just to show off. So yeah, let's go. And as you can see, it still does the same thing. Um, it has a... Stop it. There you go. You can keep playing it. Turn it down a little bit. Massive volume. Um, you can rewind it back to start with a rewind button. You can pause it. Resume it. And you can go to the song if you so desire. And you can switch to another song if you want to. I love this thing. This thing is awesome. Ah, it works so well. <laughs> can't wait to get to the actual sound effects real quick because I'm starting to really understand how SEO Mixer works and I'm actually liking it. It's a lot of fun to play with. So yep, yeah. I'm going to get back to devving so I can add sound effects next. Alright, I'm back and this is uh, the next day and also Happy Halloween. It is the 31st. Um, I did a bunch of work with the sound, the sound effects player. Um, I did make some changes, so There's music player, sound effects player. Oh, sound effects player 2D is missing. Well, I ran into some issues with this, and I decided just to take the sound effects player 2D stuff and just add it to the sound effects player, and how to do 3D, 2D audio is that it depends when you play the audio file. If you don't pass anything, <coughs> it just plays the, it just plays the uh, sound effect normally. However, if you put this boolean value is to be true in the sound effects player down here, it will launch this code, which will do the um, E2D position audio math. If not, it will set the position to an angle of zero, distance of zero, which basically is the normal um, position that this function is set to every time. And let me run it real quick. Just to demonstrate. <coughs> Still, play the music. It stops now. As you can see, I moved the sound controls up because they're getting the way down here. Let's stop that. Well, music. This play button right here plays the explosion normally. Let's see. This one plays it with the uh, 2D. Uh, position sound. As you can see, it's coming out of the right ear. If I were to move this way and keep doing it, it will move to the left ear, which makes sense because the player is left of the sound, so the sound source. Let me go back this way. This is it. I think I am technically done with the sound system for now. So, 
Um, I'm thinking about probably doing a quick little demo of the sound system for y'all. So, which should come out in a couple of days, hopefully. I guess I want to add some features where I can make it where if you play music and you switch between, you have the option of keep playing it instead of stopping like that. And I want to make it where you can loop sound effects so you don't have to keep doing this or this because it's kind of annoying. <laughs> you know what I mean by that. Oh well, y'all take care. And I hope I see you in another video. Um, take care of everybody.